know my intuition. I got bars and eighth, but never in a prison. Too far gone, never gonna sit and listen. This is optimism mixed with the best. You get it? Uh, what you're seeing is a piece in the flesh. I'm vetted up. Uh, I don't need to try speak for the. What's happening out there, great lands of all um, interesting, amazing streaming lands? How are we doing out there? I thought we'd change it up there by including all the streaming lands there for you guys. But anyways, welcome to the MCU's Bleeding Edge. Uh, we are live here, 5-5. Five five, uh, Going to be discussing the 2000 epic film, Gladiator. That's right, people. Gladiator. Now, not to be confused with the Gladiator from 1992 starring Cuba Gooden Jr. Yes. This is the one with Russell Crowe, people. So, if you were thinking it was that one, eh, sorry, no, you're wrong. This is the, the Oscar-winning film. Anyways, so, like I said, Gladiator came out in 2000. And an interesting story about Gladiator, actually, uh, is that it actually was not being considered for running at the Academy Awards for 2000. Uh, a lot of people actually didn't think that it was going to make an appearance at the Academy Awards that year and thought that it wasn't contending because it wasn't really winning any of the big, such, like, you know, bigger critic like, certain awards that usually, films that usually win Best Picture or win any type of award for the Academy, they usually don't. Uh oh. It didn't win in these certain areas, but still ended up going to the academies. So, it was actually nominated for the most that year, in 2000, or I should say in 2001, anyways. Uh, it was nominated for 12 Academy Awards, won five of them, and uh, was, you know, uh, it, it really swept a lot of the categories because it was going up against quite a few good films at that time. I mean, Crouching T uh, Tiger, Hidden Dragon was out that year, was nominated for several awards, too. Uh, I believe that year there was two other films that were nominated for 10 Academies and ended up only coming away with a couple, I believe. Uh, Gladiator definitely took the most with five. Now, Gladiator won Best Picture, Best Costume Design, Best Actor for Russell Crowe, Best Sound, and Best Visual Effects. But what's interesting about the Best Sound uh, nomination was the fact that James Horner, who did the music for the film, actually was did co-did the music with another uh, lady. And because the Academy has some sort of strict policy where only one person could be nominated, she actually... Uh, wasn't able to be uh, a part of it, uh, even though they won the best sound uh, uh, Oscar. So uh, she still was a part of the sound. So I believe James Horner actually did mention her name and said that she was a part of it, but she wasn't able to be a part of the nomination process, which was kind of sucked. Uh, but taking away five Oscars, I think that's really great. I, I think it's you know showed how amazing this film was. I remember rooting watching the Academy Awards that year going, I swear to God, Gladiator be better win Best Picture because all the other stuff was just shit. It did not deserve to win. This is the film that should win. And I was so ecstatic when it won. So, yeah, I was very happy. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff, you had something you'd like to mention about the Academy Awards. Did not another team movie come out that year? No, 2001. Ah, I was going to say, because not another team movie was a dope movie. What, what does that have to do with the awards? <laughs> no, that is a dope movie, anyway. But uh, no, uh, no, I figured I, I'm sure Alan would like to opine too. As far as the awards go, I just wanted to say I think that they were that for once the Academy did a really good job with the, the, those picks because everything that they won on, they should have won on, right? All of them, all those categories, they killed it in the movie. I thought the sound, the fucking soundtrack is great. Right, it correlates very well with the film and the flow of it, the action. Right, um, it's very well timed, um, and uh, it fits the settings and whatnot of like you know, the, of the scenes, and whatnot, and everything. Right, the vibe of the scenes, um, and um, it's uh, just very well done. Um, it, you know, it, it it adds a very it adds an element where you where you not, you notice it. Right, that's it. You, that kind of element. Right, like I don't I don't know how else to describe it. You notice it. Kind of like Dances with Wolves, except for, um, you know, or excuse me, Dances, dances in, with Wolves or whatever. 
or in wolves or some shit. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and then the continuation of it, why er? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> but no, um, no, seriously though. But um, and so now Ridley Scott was nominated right for best director too. Yes. Yes, and I think that um, now who won best director that year? It's a question. I I'm thinking. I'm wondering to myself. Um, I look it up, but um, no. I just wanted to say basically that I just thought that that's it seems very to me. Um, I knew all that information. I'd already read it myself too. That like, um, basically like you said, um, uh, it wasn't until all the other award ceremonies started going ahead and giving them awards, the Peabody, the Emmys or, or not the Emmys, but you know, the street actors guild and whatnot. Once it started gaining traction across the span of the different award circuit shows, they, it got to a point where there was, the Oscars could not do, deny the film, right? It, they couldn't. Um, if I understand correctly, if that makes sense, I think, you know, um, because you're right. They were not even being considered on the radar along with like an, another film or two. We're not even on the, on the map of the Oscars, um, which is just stupid, but either way, um, no, uh, Alan, I'll go to you. I'll, I'll throw it to you if you have anything for it. What do you think about the, about those Oscars, the, the, those picks? Well, yeah. Well, the, uh, the, they, they, they picked the, the right stuff. I think what, when, when it goes back to the. They weren't thinking that it was going to be any good in the sense that not that it wasn't going to be any good. They it really when you think about it, it really hadn't wasn't promoted that much. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. But then, you know, what they did was they, you know, you watch the first five minutes of it and then you're like, holy shit, you know, this is different. You know, the music and everything, you know, they they they, they picked the right stuff on it. I I I. I I think you're you're right when it comes to the Oscars that that year, you know they actually picked a right movie, you know they didn't pick some crappy ass movie that nobody watches like they do now. Yeah. Most certainly. All right. So yeah. So like I said, nominated for twelve, won five. Uh, they ended up taking two Golden Globes, four BAFTAs, and six Critic Choice Awards as well that year. Uh, I believe Russell Crowe uh, took pretty much all the different uh, categories for Best Actor and all those different awards, too. Uh, Ridley Scott did take one, I believe, in either the BAFTAs or the uh, Critic's Choice, uh, but he did not win, of course, for uh, Gladiator, unfortunately. Uh, it was out also the first year where a... Uh, a film that won Best Picture had it won in a directing category or the cinematography category since 1950, with the winner of that year being uh, the last film that actually won Best Picture without winning those two categories. Uh, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, The American Beauty came out in 1999, sir. Ah! Okay, my bad. So who won Best Director? That Wait year? a minute, though. It says right here, Academy Award nominees 2000. Um, You're looking for Academy Awards for 2001. Okay. Because the movies came out in 2000, but don't get nominated until 2000, the year after. Oh, my bad. It has Russell Crowe in here as Best Actor. Yeah, so who won Who won uh, the Best Director that year? That's uh, what he's trying to find the, out. Yeah, for the Oscar. Because, I mean, you know... If they won all them awards, you know, who, you got to figure out which movie won the best director, you know. There's some, some pretty interesting people here. Best Supporting Actress, they had Tony Collette that year, Angelina Jolie, Chloe Sevedney, Samantha Morton, who I like, Catherine Keeter, I like her too. The Cider House Rules came out that year. That was a good film. Yeah, that was a good film. Yep, yeah, it was. Um, the Tale of Mr. Ripley. Uh, let's see. Holy shit, Tom Cruise actually was nominated for Best Supporting Actor that year. Dang, what for? Who the fuck knows? Steven Soderbergh won for Traffic in 2000. Ah, yeah, that and makes then, sense. And then Ron Howard won A Beautiful Mind in 2001. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, tra I mean, Traffic really, I mean, they pushed Traffic when it came out. They really pushed it. You know, it was like... Okay. No, you're right. I am looking at 2000. I don't know why Kurt Russell was nominated in 2000. Did he make a film in 2000 that would that would have been 
nominee worthy? Can you remember? Yeah, he did the insider. <sighs> oh, the ins fuck the insider, man! Holy shit! Wow, I forgot all about that. And don't forget, LA Confidential was ninety nine. Oh, I oh oh yeah, I, hey LA Confidential, bro. Hey, that's coming up the pipe. You know it has to. We got to do it. I love that film. Love it. Yeah. So yeah, no. that's, why he, that's probably why you saw his name on there again. Cause was the, the, was the, the in, three years? Was the Insider HBO Studios produced? No. Mm, I don't think so. No. no, HBO didn't really do much until the late two thousands. I mean, yeah, now they're big was, because uh, of the streaming and all that. But I don't know where I got that from. But that is a really good film. It really is, and that and that really for me like. With him, I'm not trying to get divert. I'm just saying, um, he really changed his look up and whatnot and everything for the first time for that role. Like he was, he looked like a different person. It was Touchstone that produced that and Spyglass, so it was a Disney production. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, he and, was good in both of those movies, but he didn't carry them like, uh, like Gladiator. Man, he carried Gladiator. No, and he did he I think, did he even get nominated for anything for uh, LA Confidential? Yeah, I thought he got for Best Supporting Actor, I thought. I think that. he did, too, yeah. Yeah, I know it won Best Picture. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he had a hell of a streak there for a minute. Yeah, he was. He yeah. had a big streak there for those three years there. So yeah, yeah. Because he was nominated also for A Beautiful Mind in 2001, too. Wow, I mean, that's true. Holy shit, that's true. Wow, that's yeah. fucking like, what, that's, what is that, four years in a row? Yeah. Basically, no, or no, three out of five or four out of five? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck, man! He was killing it. He went from there to Thor. <laughs> he was killing it, dude. I loved him as Zeus. He I do awesome. love him as Zeus, man. He did good he was at Zeus. Fantastic. <laughs> no, Unhinged. He was fantastic at Unhinged. If you haven't seen that movie, yep. He was really fantastic at that. <laughs> all right, so back to Gladiator, folks. So yeah, so like I was saying, all those awards. So Gladiator <clears throat> is set in 180 AD. And basically, the film uh, tells the story of Maximus, uh, who is played by Russell Crowe. We have a great, rich cast in this film, which, you know, includes, uh, you know, uh, Richard Harris in one of his last roles, you know, prior to his dying as Marcus Aurelius. We had Connie Nielsen as Lucille. We had Joaquin Phoenix as Commodus. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, a huge, just a huge, great cast. Digimon Huzan was in it, too, as well. He played a really great character in the film. This was also uh, one of um, the final films that, uh, uh, why is his name? Uh, Oliver Reed did. Yep, uh, yep. He, this was his final film. They actually had to do some digital face uh, things for this film because he died during production. That's right, Proximo. Yep, Proximo. And uh, this was just an epic film. I mean, from the start of this film, it, it is just magnificent. It is Con amazing. And Connie fantastic. Nielsen. Don't forget Connie Nielsen, too. She was outstanding, too. <laughs> he did say that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Cyber. <laughs> just, 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 just be quiet, please. <laughs> I'll be quiet. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yes, I ma mentioned the great Connie Nielsen. Yes. Who plays Lucille, Lucilla, or however you want to say yes. it. But anyways, so yeah, this movie has a really great cast. It's epic. It's amazing. It's got great imagery. Uh, the cinematography in this is amazing. The sound was great. The digital, the digital CGI for the time was fantastic. Yes. That's why it, it was nominated for visual effects for one. Uh, I mean, those death sequences and the fighting sequences were done so well. They looked real. They looked so realistic. They were done so well. And I remember when watching this and thinking that, I was like, holy crap, this is just amazing. But the first question I like to ask, before we really get into the meat of the film a little bit, uh, I, I want to get everyone's first impression uh, from the film when you first watched it. What were you guys' thoughts on it when you first watched it? Was it like an epic to you? Did you, uh, going in, did you feel like this was going to be a great film? And, you know, oh, how did you feel it, it was going to be? Uh, starting with you, Alan. Um, actually, I had no idea what the movie was about when I went and watched it. Um, went to the theater and watched it, and and I went the next day. I watched it three or four times. I mean, I went a, a couple of times and watched it again and again because it was like, 
I mean, you think about it. The first, the first ten minutes, you know, the the, you know, it's like in my command, unleash hell. It's like, oh shit, what the hell's going on here? And then the storyline and all that. It was, yeah, it, Gladiator is it, man. That's the shit. Yeah, but I had no idea. I, I had no idea what the movie's about. You know, because they show you the previews and this and that, but you really didn't know what it was. And when they showed them the theater previews before, it's not like they do now that they show you basically the whole movie in a preview when you when you watch it in the movie theater. They didn't do that then. So you had no idea what you were getting yourself into. You know, And it was a long-ass movie, and it was just it. But when it finished, it was like, this is it. You know, damn. You know, it, it, yeah. Yeah, two hours and 35 minutes. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like it's that long because mm -hmm. it goes by so fast. So, yeah, yep. it's, it's a really, uh, yeah, I agree. It's very, uh, my going into it, I knew that I was going to probably like it because I knew it was, uh, there was action in this film. And I love pretty much any action film. I don't care how bad it is. I, if, as long as it's got some good action sequences in it, I'll like it. And I, I already liked Ridley Scott as a director. I thought he was great. And I saw Russell Crowe in a few other films prior to seeing him in this. I was like, eh, this looks like it might be pretty good. And then I remember just coming out going blown away like, wow, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Like, it was so good. And it just was really fantastic. And I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. Uh, Jeff, you may talk now, sir. Uh, but anyways, uh, what, same question to you, sir. What were your thoughts going into Gladiator? What was your impression the first time you watched it? And did you expect it to be what it was? Um, well, you know what? And again, um, I think it's cool that I can, um, connect to, um, you know, my, um, my childhood or whatever would not with the stuff because I watched Gladiator with my family again. Right, like you know, again, the movies we've been that we've been picking for the most part so far, Cyber, until we get like maybe it's in Lord of the Rings, right? Um, are all ones that I either saw independently on my own, just just you know combing through my mom and dad, my dad's VHS cassette collection that I was allowed to, you know, just pick and choose whatever I wanted from, right? So if I wanted to watch a movie, I watched a movie, and I was a kid, so you know I would experiment. Well, Gladiator was one of those films that we watched together, like on a Sunday, just like Braveheart, you know. Like just like you know, a couple just like a couple films, you know, we watched it together as a family. Um, you know, uh, when my brother and sister were little, um, and um, so I went into it having never watched that, watched a trailer, or not really even knowing what to expect, other than the fact that I knew Russell Crowe was really good in *L.A. Confidential*, right? I'd seen *The Insider*, right? Because back then I watched, I did, I loved watching TV and movies all the time. I, I could handle it. I didn't have I did my ADHD didn't affect me to where I couldn't focus and shit, so I could watch TV. I liked it. I watched it all the time. I watched movies all the time. Sometimes I, you know, I was a kid. I'd go to sleep to certain movies. So uh, basically, all I knew going in was the premise, sort of the time period that it was. It was the sort of towards the end of the greatness of ancient Rome, right? The, sort of the, the the decline period of state of it. And that um, it starred Russell Crowe, who I thought L.A. Confidential was outstanding, right? I loved that film as a kid. That one I saw individually. I picked that and thought it looked cool. And I was right. And then I just thought that, um, you know, upon watching it, I thought to myself very much that um, it was just really, even as a young kid, I thought it was just really well acted and well written, you know, really well written and well acted. Even as a, even as a, like eighteen year old or seven or excuse me sixteen seventeen year old or whatever, I could tell that like this was like superior, right? The structure of the film, I guess. Looking back, I could see how how fluid everything was. Uh, like you mentioned, the crispness of the 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 action shots, the fighting scenes, the 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 stuff that they would um they would zoom in on, and and the quality of those shots, right? The movement shots. Right, like the the chariot race deal, whatnot, and everything, and whatnot. How they handled that so well, cinematically, and it looks so authentic and real. Um, you know, like I just felt like it really depicted to me, um, like you know, a, for, it was probably the first movie I ever saw that visually to me gave me the impression of what it must have been like back then. 
So, but going into it, all I really knew about it and expected was essentially that it, it had to be good pretty much because Russell Crowe was in it. Yoka and Phoenix was I knew was pretty solid at that point too. And I like Connie Nielsen at that point. She'd done some solid stuff at one point, at that point, right? And of course, Ridley Scott. Right? But, you know, most kids, if you watched movies back then, you knew Ridley Scott was a good, a good director. Most definitely. I agree. 100%. Uh, I, th- I mean, most people, I think, automatically, you know, uh, think of when they hear the name Ridley Scott, they think of Alien. Well, That's yeah. Like the first thing they think of, so. And that's not um, a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing, do you? No, it's not a bad thing, but I'm just saying, I think that's the first thing most people will, uh, com- you know, combine him with or uh, attribute to him is Alien uh, versus Gladiator. But, uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of uh, his name has come very synonymous with Gladiator as well over the years now. Uh, it's funny to think that this movie is 23 years old. I know, it's uh, crazy. It's crazy that it came out not long ago, so... It's a fantastic film, really well done, and that. Thank you. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, you know, back then the trailers were so different than they are today. Uh, even you know, 30, 40 years ago, they were very different. I mean, I feel that the trailers were better back then. I think uh, than they are today because sometimes they do show too much, or they focus too much on things that they show right away, and they also don't. They like really. They've gotten like to a point where, you know, they definitely don't edit them as well as they used to as well because it, there's a lot of things that like they cut off at a certain point and I think it confuses some people when they go to see the film and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, that didn't make sense, but now it does. So most definitely really awesome. All right, so like I was saying, uh, this takes place in 180 AD. It's basically. Uh, you know, coming to the end of the Roman Empire, uh, Marcus Aurelius is old. He's feeble. Uh, the movie starts out really awesome. We have a great first epic battle sequence uh, that really just gets us right into the film. You're like right off the bat, you're like this great action sequence where they're fighting the pretty much the last people that are in their way of you know full domination basically, and. Uh, we see, you know, Russell Crowe in action as as Maximus, and we get to see all the different Roman people fighting and fighting these like uh, native people to the land there, and just you know basically kick a butt and taking names. And uh, we get, you know, after we get this epic battle sequence, uh, we kind of get some uh, interesting little, you know, pinpoints before we really get to what happens to Maximus. We get introduced to Connie Nielsen's Lucille. We get uh, introduced to Commodus uh, by that play is played by Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, we get kind of that introduction to them a little bit, kind of their relationship a little bit, and then also we get this great kind of like conversation between Aurelius and Maximus. Basically, him telling Maximus that he's going to give him his kingdom because he's dying, and that you know he, there's nobody he can trust. He feels like that Maximus would be an honorable replacement because he would be just and fair and wouldn't be like how Commodus is, who is all about himself, basically, and doesn't really care about the people and stuff like that and the Senate and all that kind of stuff. And so we get kind of that sequence there. You know, we get introduced to those characters. We kind of get an idea of what where it's going. And then that's when Maximus is about trying to... Uh, Threesome the first day cited by old best. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, if if that is factual, people out there, what was just posted, uh, uh, that's um really hilarious. But anyway, so basically, then Maximus is about to get all his people uh together after they after Marcus Aurelius has died. Uh, and basically, he has figured out that you know that Commodus, uh, Commodus killed him, and so Commodus. And basically, before he can get anything together, uh, Commodus has already arranged for him to be killed and his family to be killed. And so, basically, that's when he, he's basically taken, he's ridden for all day to be executed. And when he's about to be executed, he of course. Kills all the guards that are supposed to kill because he's freaking Maximus. He's the original general. He's like the man. So we have another great epic little fight sequence there where he takes out all the awesome 
uh, you know, other guards that he was working for him and now are against him. And then he basically, after getting, he kind of gets injured and he makes his way back to where his family is, they, he ends up finding them dead. Uh, and that's basically kind of where the story begins. So, before we move further on after that, what were your thoughts on how this movie opens? What did you think about the epic battle? What did you think about the introduction to Lucille, to Commodus, to Marcus Aurelius, to Maximus? And your thoughts on kind of that beginning sequence leading up to him becoming a uh, basically a uh, captive or a prisoner. What did you think about that fight sequence that happened between him and the guards after he's been taken captured and is trying to be killed to silence him and stuff like that? What were your thoughts on that whole beginning sequence? And did you enjoy it? Did you appreciate it? What were your thoughts all on that beginning intro to this film? Uh, we'll start with you, Alan. Oh, the beginning? Oh, the, the, the shit, that was awesome. I mean, it set the tone... It, it, I mean, it set the tone for the movie in the sense that it started off with with the battle. So, you know, he has the battle, and then they win the battle, and then the emperor shows up, and then the emperor basically is like, you know, you're the generals of the north. You know, these guys are honoring you, you know, and and before all that happens, basically, Maximus is like, all right, I get my job done. I want to go home. You know, I want to go home. I want to be with my family. And, and all of us can identify with that man you kick ass you you know you do what you got to do you work out of town whatever you want to go home you want to be with your family and then he's like well i have one more job for you to do it's like all right well you know it 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 was like okay you're leading me into something something else and then it was a roller coaster of emotion because at the beginning you're excited for him then you see all the people around him and you're like well these people are a bunch of bastards you know and then the emperor's like all right i want you to you know basically take over not so much take over i want you to give it back to the senate but i know if you command the armies and the armies give it back to the senate nobody's gonna fuck with you because these guys will die for you so it was like all right i mean the first 15 20 25 30 minutes of the movie had a lot more action than a lot of action movies at that time had. So that, that you know, that first, you know, it was by the time it got to where, where we're going to start off e eventually, you know, by the time it got to that, man, you were like, Ooh, what just happened? You know, you know, and, and it's, yeah, the, the action scene, the, the, the fight scene, honestly, I don't think there's I don't think there's a, a movie yet to have a, a beginning like that. You know, a lot of movies start with a battle, but not a battle like that. You know, the 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 the, the, cinema, the cinematography or whatever they call it. You know, with the dog running at the beginning and him running down the thing and talking to his guys and all that. You know, nah. I still don't think. Yeah, that that that. You know, the beginning is. You know, the whole movie was awesome, but the beginning, it set a standard. Agreed, most definitely. I mean, I think up to this point we've had, you know, there's been quite a few action, sci-fi action and stuff like that, that have big opening action sequences, but not to this scale. And also not to this accurateness, because a lot of what they did, they did pretty accurately to what it was like back in 180 AD. So... The fact that the outfits and everything looked pretty authentic and all that kind of stuff, too, really played into making that sequence so action-packed and so amazing. So, yeah, I ha definitely agree there with you. All right, Jeff, your thoughts, say same question, sir. Well, I mean, I think Alan covered a lot of, like, uh, what would uh, what would have been what my integral, you know, uh, points and whatnot and everything. Overall, I think that... Um, Regardless of maybe the differences in terms of um, the short attention spans of, 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 you know, not even just like, you know, really super young adults, but like even just, you know, some older people nowadays uh, where things are at with technology and the Internet and social media, whatnot, whatnot, saying, you know, yada, yada, etc. I think that in general, for a long time now, overall, 
um, if you look at, you know, um, not all, but some of the best films, depending on genre, they usually do have really fucking solid openings that are not just like short little tiny things like long, you know, full blown scene, like segments of film where it's like 20 minute long, you know, deals where it's just all legit. Like they just, they, like they, they hook you from jump. Like, like they're not, it's not, they're not manipulating you. It's not strategic almost. It's like, but here you go. Like, this is the kind of quality shit you're going to get for two and a half hours. So here, you know, what do you think? Is this good enough? You know what I'm saying? What not to keep your attention for two and a half hours? Because I mean, you know, this is pretty fucking sick. So, you know, um, I mean, literally like it's that simple when it boils down to it. Right. Um, you know, uh, even back in fucking the 80s and 90s and whatnot and everything, people's, people were still human beings. If they started watching that damn film and it was so fucking bad in the first 15 minutes that it was garbage, they just stopped watching it. It's not complicated. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, like I do it too. They, uh, I, they did it then. Um, so, you know, overall, um, I think that if anything, it probably uh, hats off to Ridley Scott, man. You know what I'm saying? He directed the film. Hats off to the whole crew and everybody and... You know, I mean, I'm sure everybody pitched in, right? Obviously, there was no weak facet of the team in terms of production and, you know, uh, their filming and whatnot and everything and the, and the backgrounds and the costume and, just, and all that whatnot. They didn't cut any corners and, like, everybody did their jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, well-produced, high-quality intro. Yep. Agreed. Very yep. well. Yeah, yep. very and, much so. Yep, and it delivers a lot in a short period of time as far as what's going to happen in the film. Like the, the dichotomy of it. Yeah, it changed movie making. That battle, that first scene changed movie making because if you watch movies now, they start with a battle scene. They all, Most of the, the action films start with like a, a action f- whatever, but I mean, it's not to that caliber, but they changed movie making when that came out. Agreed. Very much so. I think so. All right. So, what was everyone's thoughts on the, uh, that beginning fight, battle sequence when the other group comes down and has the dude's head? What was everyone's thoughts on that? I gotta, I gotta know what everyone thought about that. Uh, Alan, what did you think about when that guy was holding that the uh, Roman guy's head when they came to start the battle? Yeah. I- I mean, yeah, actually, I was going to mention that it was, you know, it was like, do you think what's what's going to be their answer? And then the next thing you know, the guy comes out with the thing. And that's when Russell Crowe's like, all right, on my command, unleash hell. It was like, man, that fucking hey. I mean, anybody that likes war, you know, and likes battles and shit, that, 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 you know, that was the, that was the thing right there, man. It was like, all right, that's, and, and it was, you know, it was a kick-ass battle, you know, they all just basically burned each other up and stabbed each other and you know but still you know you still at the, at the time watching the battle you still didn't know what was going on i mean you knew they were fighting you know the guys but you really didn't know what part of the battle was you didn't really know if this was the end of it you you had no idea you just knew it was a battle and then at the end of the battle you realized all right it was getting close to the end and he wanted to go home but you know, at the time, you really didn't know. You all you knew is, hey, the Romans were fighting these guys, and I, you know, that was basically it. But the battle itself was shit. It was good. Excellent, uh, Jeff. Any thoughts on the the head sequence there? Well, I want to just bounce off Alan. I knew who was going to win the battle because Russell Crowe's the star of the film. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, he wasn't going to lose. You feel me? Um, he was not getting sexually rejected that night. All right. It was not happening. <laughs> so, uh, as far as my thoughts on that, the battle, I mean, it's, it was, it really deeply impacted my life. Uh, and I, the, the whole best way I can say it is just DD mega doo doo. I'm sorry. There you go. That encapsulates <laughs> my entire, like, you know, the whole tangent I was going to go off of. It's right there. So you thought the head, the holding the head was mega doo doo? <laughs> no, no. What I thought is that um, I really do. Uh, I'm a boring ass person to the point where I really do enjoy the the concept of watching how military strategy worked back in these times, 
right? Organized military strategy and how battles were fought, how they were structured, like Alan said, almost like you, in different stages and like where, the, where there's different parts almost, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, and I don't like the contrast. Fucking echoing, man. The bane of my existence. Um, but no, uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, do a, I'm gonna do a deal with the devil tonight to eliminate echoing from my life tonight. Anyways, uh, but no, um, I, um, I don't like to contrast or compare because, like, you know, weapons, um, technology advance has advanced, you know, over the centuries, and whatnot, and everything. Right? Of course, warfare is going to change when, like, the weapons and your ability to, like, you know, uh, deliver punishment, you know. Uh, your your ability to like kill people or be more effective in battle is obviously dependent on what kind of arms you use and how much damage you can do. Uh, uh, basically, I think that um, scenes like that, I like, of course, the authentic the authenticity of it. Again, the fact that like things were that fucking savage back then, right? Like, I mean, this is savagery, and that's how it should be, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on now, think about what the world must have been like back then. You you had to do shit like that. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. I mean, you know, I mean, come on now. Um, it, it ain't like nowadays and whatnot. Like, I mean, fuck. Even in Rome, like, stuff was, stuff was fucking crazy. So, like, you know, like, uh, I mean, warfare was a whole different ball game back then, man. How they went about it. They didn't, ha they weren't concerned about G the Jiva Convention. You feel me? So, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Jiva Convention? What's the Jiva Convention? They weren't concerned about like the um the bat the rules of battle that we live that we that, that we live that, 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 that we live by and whatnot. I mean, they just the this, the code, code of standard. No, I'm just messing with you, Janine. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Jiva's a chick that I used to. Never mind. Oh whatever. Hey, at least, at least I didn't say dances dances in wolves or some shit. Like I fucked a wolf or whatever. You haven't? No. Who the, uh, I totally thought that was on your list. You who, know? The, who, the, who the hell? Who the hell? Who the hell mispronounces "Dances with Wolves"? One of the most like no fucking movies ever, and says "Dances in Wolves" or some shit. You do? I guess so. I say it for now. On, I'm saying it all the time. That's my new shit. There you go. There you go. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. All right. So at this point, uh. After uh, Russell Crowe, uh, Maximus has discovered his dead wife and child. Uh, he basically falls uh, down from his injury and then is picked up by uh, these people that basically take people prisoner to, you know, be a part of their gladiator program, basically. And so we, we get that nice little long kind of intro uh, to Dujman Huzan's character. Where the, the, he's uh, he's laying flat on his back, healing, and Dijman Huzan's taking care of his wound, and uh, we get to see that cool kind of like fake looking cut, but it looks pretty realistic with the maggots and everything, which was really cool, and uh, and basically they he gets you know back to whatever town they're going to, and are you know put up for auction, and uh, he is bought by. Uh, Proximo, uh, played by the late great Oliver Reed, and I I gotta say Oliver Reed was fantastic in this film. I absolutely loved him as Proximo. I think it was a really great final film for him. He he was fantastic in it, and uh, too bad he, he, this was his last film. But at the same time, he put out a whole bunch of great films, you know, from the sixties and seventies and eighties and so forth, and. He just was a really fantastic actor, so I thought this was a really great way to go out because it was really was a very superb role. And so basically after, you know, uh, Maximus gets bought and he's basically thrown into his first kind of gladiator uh, event. And we basically get kind of that great more action sequence. Uh, and basically the first time he gets thrown in, he's chained to another guy. And has to, you know, basically, uh, you know, fight for his life. And this sequence I thought was just 
I mean, all the sequences I thought were done so well, but this sequence was just really fantastically done because being chained together, that was a lot harder feat to do when you're not separated. So I think that this really shows how talented Maximus is and how, you know, fantastic he at, is at combat and why he was the general of the Roman army. And, you know, so we get this great epic kind of sequence where he ends up surviving, killing a whole bunch of people, and basically, like, kind of his troop that he was with all survived, too, as well, besides, you know, a few casualties, but really kind of the core group there of these, you know, prisoners, as they are, you know, basically kick butt. So, we get that great sequence there that was really well done. And this sequence really... I think it, you know, really kind of catches the attention of all the people, you know, in the stands and and even Proximo himself, you know, say, saying that you know there's something more to Maximus that meets the eye, even though he's just known as the Spaniard. And uh, you know, it, it's just really fantastically done. So, uh, so like I said, he. Basically, he has that first match that he's a part of, and after the match, uh, that's when he uh, ends up talking to Proximo, uh, and kind of Proximo kind of makes him kind of the head gladiator, basically, and uh, you know sees the potential in him and that he can you know kick butt and all this kind of good stuff, and uh, you know that he can make him a lot of money because you know that's pretty much what these guys do. They buy these people to to fight to make money. And, uh, you know, of course, like I said, you know, it, Ma Maximus is friends with, you know, uh, Hagen, a German, and Juba, a Numidian, as he's called. Uh, and that, um, you know, during that conversation that Proximo has with Maximus, he reveals that he was once a gladiator who was freed by Marcus Aurelius. Uh, and that, you know, if he, if, you know, Maximus wins the crowd and, and sh is a good sport and, like, kicks butt and stuff like that, that... He will be he be able to be set free too because he's winning the audience and the umpire will you know probably release you out of this. So you have that great conversation, that first epic sequence there, the fight sequence. So let's talk a little bit about those. What were you guys' thoughts on that first fight sequence, that conversation Maximus has for, with Proximo, and what did you think about kind of that beginning sequence leading up to him being? put into slavery and being bought. Uh, what was your thoughts on the, kind of that sequence of the film? Starting with you, Alan. Um, actually, uh, the what I liked about the sequence was you, as, as, as when you're watching the movie, you know, and he gets to the part that his wife's got, his wife and children, his, his son was killed, you were pissed off. You know, when you're watching the movie, you're mad in the sense, you know, you're feeling... And so when he goes through all the shit going through the, you know, he becomes a slave and, and you still have that, that he, I guess Russell Crowe really, you know, he sold it. You still have that feeling of you just mad the whole time, mad the whole time. You know, he don't want to fight back, you know, and then he's forced to fight. So once he's forced to fight, you know, then you start evolving with his character. You're like, well, you know, he's going to have to fight to survive. And, you know, he, he's going to have to do all this stuff to get to where he's at. And then, you know, Proximo, you really don't know who Proximo is until he has that conversation. Then you realize, well, Proximo was, you know, he was a gladiator himself. But at the time, you know, when you when you're watching the sequences of going on, you start, you know, at least I did. You know, I was mad. You know, they killed his wife and child and all that. And then you're like, oh. You know, he's going to get revenge. He wants revenge so bad. And, you know, and then he has to fight. And then he develops a friendship with Juba and, 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 and the other dude. You know, it, 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 it you know, as, as, as an audience, you know, you start getting, you actually believe the friendship. You know, you get into that friendship part and then you get into the part with, with Proximo. So it's, it's, a, it's an, emotion, an emotional roller coaster. Because you go from angry to sad, not like literally sad, because I mean, I don't cry in movies. I mean, it's all fake, but 
you know, it, it, it you go from angry to sad, and then you go to okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll stay neutral on it, you know. So it, the the dynamic, the the battle itself would when he was tied up to the guy and all that, you know, you realize, yeah, Maximus was good in the first battle. You know, he was the general, like you said, you know, but once you realize when these the smaller hand-to-hand -hand combats, he's just a motherfucking badass. You know, he's the man, and he can actually, you know, he lead a bunch of slaves to win battles. You know, so it, it yeah, it, you know, I, I don't know if I answered your question, but I mean, it, it, you know, it was more like a roller coaster up and down. And then Proximo, then you realize Proximo is not really that much of a bad guy. Okay, he, he's in it for the money, you know, but he he understands that Maximus can make him a bunch of money. But he, he he's like, well, you know, Maximus is a, it's a good guy, but, you know, we're living in Rome and, you know, we're living with a bunch of scumbags and stuff. And he's a slave trader. I mean, he, he's not really a great guy. You know, he's a slave trader, but, you know, it, 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 it's more like an up and down to it so it, it it i really don't have much to say on it because you know it, it has to go into the other parts that we're going to talk about and then that all leads to that but it's you know it's more like a it's a roller coaster so i really don't have like a set something to say about it because we still have to reach when the emperor becomes emperor and all that crap there you know? yeah yeah no that's fine perfect that was great excellent job there uh, uh, you pretty much gave like a, a good ex explanation kind of of that sequence. So I thought, I thought you did good. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff, same question, sir. Uh, talking about, you know, basically Russell Crowe when he's first picked up and his wound is being healed to him, being put into slavery, him being bought by Proximo, his first epic gladiator battle. And then that conversation with Proximo. Well, um, if, if it's okay, if I can just reach back before I go into it, just mention uh, bouncing off Alan, the him, the wife, and then losing his. It was is it was it just the one child or two children? No, one. Just one. Was it? A, I can't remember. Was it a son? It was a son, right? Yeah, it was a son. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I I think it's interesting. I guess just to try to just say something different about it, give a different opinion. I remember, I remember as a, a kind of in a way I could kind of relate as as a kid when I I saw that. Um, it's um, you know, like I mean, um, seeing that when you're like a teenager and whatnot and everything, right? It's um, it's eye opening. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you um, you really you can't really think deeply into it and whatnot, right? Because you can't connect to it at all. You're not emotionally mature enough. You know what I'm saying? To grasp what the pain must be like, or or like that type of loss in life, right? I don't think um, you can't you can't comprehend it or really relate to it, but um, you know that like um, you know the, the, that uh, the norms of our of our society and you know in our culture and what they have been for a long time and whatnot, and what those traditional norms are, um, and that at any situation where um, whether it's a man or a woman, they lose their their spouse and their child, right? Um, you know, uh, that's deep, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's fucking deep. Um, and, th and they did it well, right? Like, you could do something like that in a way where it's not horrible, but, like, it doesn't have any power or effect, right? It, it doesn't do anything for, for an audience. This affects you, right? It, it does. It affects you. Right, just like Guardians, the, you know the stuff. The, 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 I cried one time during Guardians because there was this one aspect where it got me, right? You know, over time. Um, but um, that's the kind of shit where um, this movie does a great job of balancing out emotion, uh, action, fighting, um, you know, suspense, right? Violence, right? Drama. Right, um, you know, high level writing and and, uh, and delivery, you know, and um, and acting, right, and performances, um, and um, inter interpersonal relationships. Uh, but basically, um, I just say that 
I think that this is a the part of the film where you really notice, for me anyway, um, looking back now after watching it for the first time in, I don't know, probably easily 18, 17 years, I think. Um, at this point, I, I, I noticed how it had, this film has such great secondary characters like Prasimo, right? Um, like Demon, Demon Hanjo, you know, Hanzu, uh, right? Um, and yet they, um, they're, I mean, they're effective. They're, they, they're largely placed in all their scenes. Like none of it's messy. It, it all makes sense, right? Like, it, you know, they don't, they don't have to fit them in or whatever. It all flows. And, um, basically, uh, they're impactful, right? Like they, they matter to the story. They're, they're, they're a vehicle. They, they drive the story, accompany it and whatnot and everything. Yet at the same time, they never have to actually really give them much screen time or like really delve deeply into these secondary characters at all, right? They're that good in their roles and whatnot. And it's so well done that in their short scenes and whatnot, they're very effective, right? And what they deliver and add to the story. Um, like, you know, it, I don't think that that's something that's always easily perfectly done, right? Or it's probably easy to pull off. So I don't know how, who you really associate with as far as being responsible. Is it, or, you know, the actors or, you know, the writing, the direct, I don't know. Um, but either way, um, you see movies a lot of times where they have to like, they almost have to give an arc to a secondary character almost to make it tangible or give it more effect or like, uh, you know, tie it in more into the story, I guess, to facilitate the main characters or the main, you know, the drivers of the films. And in this film, they do a great job of making sure that they have really good secondary characters that only in short burst give great impact to their scenes and to the overall film and the scheme of it. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Excellent. All right. So, as I'm not, we... I, I'm not always a complete fucking retard, baby. Come on now. Nobody said you were. I know, brother. I know. So... Uh, as we move on here, so to give a break between the segments, uh, we'd like to share the Gladiator trailer and some footage with you guys. So once Mr. Jeff has that up, he will share it. And I just, I'm all live, folks. I did just use chat GDP for everything I just said right there. I just took it right off chat GDP. Thank you, chat GDP. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just, I, I'm just joking. No, that was actually me. Oh, here we go. Oh, man. Alan, the producer. We need some fart sounds, please. We do, I know, man. I, you know, honestly, Cyber, um, I'm jealous of the Black, Link, the Black Link Collective Podcast. Go. I'm jealous of the Black Link Collective Podcast. I better get my shit together and we and get some damn audio effects for us. <laughs> they're, they're really cool to have. I like them. I think they're fun. Oh, come on now. That's that's old. That's old StreamYard. We don't we don't want old StreamYard. See, I told you I got that shit locked down. There we go, oh, baby. Yeah. I, I want a mask like that. That 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 shit. I want oh, yeah. to work. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, yeah. The, that'll be a real hit for you. Be the bee's knees. You look great in that too, Alan. <laughs> yeah, I wear that shit. You, 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 should put, you, you, you can start a Tinder profile and use that as your profile picture. Here we go. In the army? Yes. I'll start with you at Bindabara. You can help me. Whatever comes out of these gates, we've got a better chance of survival if we work together. Do you understand? His accent is so fucking dope. If we stay together, we survive. I can, if, I, if I was exposed by it too much, I might become gay.
Okay. And I'm cutting it short to two minutes before we disobey the YouTube gods. <clears throat> YouTube. And I will play clip two. But I think that's that right there visual gives a great cyber. That really is, Alan, that, I think that, that just right there just shows you like, uh, you know, back, back when this movie came out, man, nothing looked like this. Nothing did. I, nothing looked like this. In this in this way, in this genre, this form. And also for, for you guys out there, uh, interesting little factoid: Gladiator actually premiered exactly twenty three years ago today. It was released May fifth, two thousand. So, isn't it a coincidence that we are doing it on the exact day it released twenty three years ago? Oh shit! Really nice. Wow, that's fucking crazy, man. This is the first battle. It is. He's like, oh shit. I'm telling you right now, you want to know what I remember, Cyber? I remember watching this shit when I was younger and whatnot and everything and thinking to myself, fuck, I would love to fucking, like, actually fucking be able to, like, go back in time and shit and whatnot and fight in some fucking battle like this and shit. I didn't give a fuck back then. I mean, I don't give a fuck now, but, like, I'm older. Hell no, man. I'd be shitting my pants. I'd be the guy who peed himself. I'm not trying to say that I'm, like, I grasp or can, I can connect or understand the mentality of, of what men must have think back then about fighting and war and like this arena stuff and all that. All I know is that there was a part of me when I was at that age that, you know, I'll always have this was younger and like a little naive where like, I, I do connect and relate and like think to myself sometimes here and there and whatnot. When I watch old war movies or read certain books about the military or world war two, where I think to myself, like, what would I have done? Right. If like I, if I had had to fight for my country, and like, you know, how would I have done in battle? 
right? You know, like how would I have done, you know, leading a, a you know, a, you know, a, a um, you know, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, leading a, whatever, a, a division or whatever, whatnot, or, you know, strategizing a battle. It's interesting, right? You know what I'm saying? And whatnot, you know? Well, yeah, yeah, it's when you it is. survive, it's, no. it's, it's, you got to do what you got to do. There's a competitive aspect too. That's a biological part of us. You know what I'm saying? It's in, it's in us. Yeah. Well, is that one? I guess once you get rid of the initial fear, you know, we're capable of doing stuff, but still, man. Sure. Think about it. That you're very, that's right. You called it. You know, it's still like. I mean, if I had to fight Mike Tyson, he'd punch me once and I'd just give up. I'd be like, I'm sorry. Mike. Yeah, but I mean, if I'm you're sorry. in the arena, though, it's, just, it's the same thing with being in the, in, the, in the room with Tyson. Like, I mean, you know, you either have it in you to stomach it and, like, try to, you know, actually dig into it and fucking fight for your life or not. You don't. Yeah, it's a it's survival. I guess it would be, you would have to do it. You know, I, I don't know. I mean... I'd like to believe that if I was in that situation, I would hopefully die honorably. Good call. Right, Cyber? Yeah. You can't, that's all you could really ask for. Mm hmm. Yep. Agreed. Because back then, man, fuck, you never, it's any, it's 50 50, baby. Yeah, it's, yep. Yeah. It, it ain't no fucking easy win. True that. True that, people. All right. So. There's a little refresher for you guys with a little bit of greatness there for you. So in those little, couple of those little scenes for you guys. And, of course, as we continue on the, uh, you know, adventure here, uh, you know, we do have a trailer we can show. Uh, and uh, Mi Mr. Jeff here just reminded us that he has it. And I asked him about it earlier and he said, I'm yes. sorry. I got it here. I can listen. I have it right here. I, so I'm we'll really, show you the trailer, folks. Yeah, it'll take two seconds. I'm sure it's probably short, too, anyway. Well, no, it's actually two hours. Of, it's two minutes and 44 seconds. Dreamworks. I've never seen this before. The general became a slave. A slave a gladiator. The gladiator defied an emperor. Only a famous death will do. The frost. Sometimes it makes the blade stick. You find yourself alone, riding in green fields with the sun on your face. Do not be troubled. Well, you are in Elysium, and you're already dead! <laughs> Brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. I like the Spaniard. I shall cheer for you. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Today I saw a slave become more powerful than the Emperor of Rome. Strengthen on us, strengthen on us. Are you a man who once said death smiles at us all? All a man can do is smile back. Smile for me now.
Okay. Motherfucker, man. Artless creators. Uh, that was a good, that, uh, that was a good fucking trailer, dude. Yeah. Holy it shit. It was a good trailer because it did. That music was fucking dope. Like, seriously. Dope. It's seriously, dope. Yeah, that was dope fucking music, man. And, like they dope did pipe, though. They did a good. They did a really good job with that trailer. Um, and uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um. Cyber, I just it, all that just bouncing off of all that and whatnot. It makes me think of uh, just the fact that again, um, Kurt Russell just like obviously kills it. I mean, you talk about he should have won like winning the fucking best you know best actor, dude. He Kurt Russell, not Kurt. I'm sorry, I'm going back to Tombstone. I'm going back to the Tombstone dimension, man. I'm sorry. Um, no, um, I'm sorry, Russell Crowe, dude. He fucking kills it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, seriously, man. Um, he's so good. Sorry, about th I'm echoing again. It's driving me crazy. Oh, but no, he's so good as, you know, uh, as, you know, his character would not everything that, um, it's, of course, um, you know, there's more food than just that, but he drives this film so well. And you can't beat it, man. I mean, I don't know how to really articulate what it was about the how villainous he was in this fucking movie, and he was he was kind of creepy, but like effective, man, right? And he delivered he delivered some fucking really good lines, man. He did. Yeah, the dialogue on it was good. I mean, it was. I mean, they did. I mean, yeah, they did a good job on everything. All over the back then, fuck, man. You know, he did. The, you know, Joaquin Phoenix was a perfect villain. I mean, he, he shit. He he sold it. I mean, he was perfect as the evil emperor, and, you know, the sissy boy, and and all that. You know, he just his, all his characters are good anyway. Cyber, what when did when was he in that Nicolas Cage movie where Nicolas Cage was um chasing the snuff film girl and all that shit? Eight what millimeter. Nine millimeter. Yeah, that was like ninety seven, ninety eight. Okay, okay. All right. I'm just wondering, just because um. No, I mean, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't think that I don't think that he's underrated in this film at all. I th I think that he he was he was given like a claim for how well he portrayed his character, but I, I really thought that he his he he really added like a, a real solid um, antagonist as as like the villain or the evil, you know you know uh, of the film, um, right to to counter, um, you know. Uh, obviously Maximus. Oh, yeah. I mean, the first 20 minutes, I mean, or 30 minutes, I mean, he kills his dad. Fuck. You know? <laughs> 100%, yeah. Yeah, it's the... Yeah, I mean, uh, I was actually going to mention... <laughs> I actually think that Joaquin Phoenix – did anybody else feel like he played like a... He kind of was a little, uh, like... Uh, wimpy, I thought. He kind of oh, yeah. was like, he was very emotional, like a little bitch type of character. Yeah, he was like, well, yeah, he was obviously very insecure and everything and whatnot, right? Like, um, honestly, um, a lot of times when like there's uh, incest or whatever, whatnot, like uh, it, the, it, a lot of it is based off of insecurities and like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And like things like that, are, you know, uh, or like complexes or mental illnesses or whatever. But either way, with him, I think it was insecurities. Man, well, I mean, even the 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 like the the character of the emperor said when he talked to the daughter, he was like, "I wished you were a man," because she had the carrot, she had the carrot, you know, the the stuff to be an emperor. She knew he didn't. He knew he didn't. You know, it was like you know he's a he's a, you know he's a piece of shit. You know, he's a little whiny boy. She was more level headed, and you know, yeah. it was perfect. No, we can't hear you echoing. Okay. No, um, no, Connie Nielsen does a really great job, too. And by this point in the film where you were at, Cyber, where we left off, she's already had an impact, right? Um, and she probably, I mean, honestly, she probably has the biggest uh, role uh, besides Yokan and uh, Crow in the film as far yeah. as scene time and whatnot and everything. Yep, she has a pretty big role. Yep, most definitely. Yeah, and they did a most good job with makeup because I mean they started her off at the beginning of it. You know, she's all dressed up, real nice. I mean, she's banging anyway, but you know, you know, and then by that, but by, by this time, you know, the emperor's taking over. You know, she's 
not wearing the makeup as much. She looks kind of worn out, you know. It's, you know, it's, it's, they, you know, they did a good job when it came to that part, too. I remember being a kid and knowing that she was totally bangable. I do. Yeah. yeah she was I remember being like a teenager and I was like, yo, I fucking smash that. Yeah. She just has that vibe, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Seriously. You know what I mean? I didn't know why I really liked her, didn't like her, whatever, whatnot. I know she, I thought she was kind of skinny, but she just has that sex appeal, baby. Mm. <laughs> There you go. Yep. There you go, people. Jeff S, aka True Knowledge, finds another chick bangable. Yeah. What what wow. else is new? What, what else is, is new, people? What a, what a shock, baby. What a shock. What That's a shock. Right. <laughs> yep. That's right. <laughs> All right. So moving on. So basically, uh, this is the point in the film where uh Kamatis uh Basically decides that he's going to have 150 days of games to commemorate his father's death. And so when Proximo finds this out, he decides uh, he's going to bring his, bring his gladiators to run the fight in the Coliseum. So basically that's when we get to our second fight that uh, you know Gladiator is in, a.k.a. Maximus. And this time, uh, they all work together to basically conquer all the people that they're fighting. And this scene, we get, like, the chariot riders and stuff like that, and they're, like, shooting arrows at them. They're using the shields to make a barrier around them, almost just like how the, the army does it, which I thought was really done well. And uh, I thought that this whole fight sequence was just so amazing. Uh, I mean, all the action that happens, the, the chick archer that gets cut in half with her own, uh, you know, chariot that she was riding on. And then you got all the people getting the arrows all into them and all this kind of cool stuff. And so we got this really epic, you know, battle sequence where, you know, with the help of Maximus leading everybody and they all working together, they're able to conquer. And that's when, you know, Commodus, like, notices it and is, like, really impressed and wants to meet uh, the gladiator, uh, a.k.a. Maximus. So they, you know, basically he ends up coming down to the field where all the gladiators are to meet Maximus, and he still doesn't know that that's this Maximus. He thought he was killed uh, back earlier. And so, you know, basically he says, you know, take off your helmet and show me who you are. How dare you turn your back to me type of deal. Uh, you know, because I'm the emperor type of deal. And so that that's when Maximus finally reveals who he really is. And Commodus notices this, and he's, like, infuriated. He's like, he can't believe he's still alive. And so basically, you know, uh, the emperor can decide whether or not the guards kill the gladiators or not and stuff like that. But because everyone is shouting, you know, uh, Spaniard or gladiator uh, and they love them so much, he, he decides not to, you know, have them killed because he can, you know, he needs to figure out another way to take care of this. <clears throat> and so after that happens, uh, basically, uh, you know, we have uh, another fight that's going to end up coming up. We have another conversation uh, between Proximo and, uh, you know, Maximus. We have uh, combos go between him and uh, Lucille. We have kind of like this in-between kind of mixture before the next fight and where we kind of get some plot points. We have some of the senators talking. We see them talking and noticing how bad Commodus is and stuff like that. And so uh, by this next fight, uh, that's when uh, basically they set up this fight with this supposedly legendary undefeated gladiator named Tigris of Gaul or Gaul. And uh, basically, Maximus is thrown into the ring with this guy, uh, who we all saw in the in the trailer and in the clips, uh, where he's wearing like kind of like this almost like Cupid looking mask. And so he goes in. So basically, Maximus is thrown in there with him to fight. They fight it out, and while this is going on, uh, Commodus is having tigers uh, being thrown into the uh, arena with them to attack and try to kill Maximus. And so, at, even though he these tigers are being thrown in there with them, uh, Maximus is able to kill one of the tigers and kill this, uh, and, and to defeat this Tigris guy. Uh, but basically, he knocks him down and he's got him at you know basically at you know death's deal where he kill him. Uh, and Maximus stops for a second, uh, and of course, Commodus ha has you know 
the uh, thing to, you know, basically tell Maximus he has to kill him, and Maximus ends up sparing his life. Uh, and, uh, you know, instead of, you know, you know, killing him cause, just because Commodus told him to, and basically the crowd starts ch uh, chanting, Maximus the Merciful, Maximus the Merciful, Maximus the Merciful, which is just freaking awesome and is amazing. And so as we uh, adventure on, um, that's when uh, Maximus comes in contact with his ex orderly Cicero, and Cicero lets him know that his legions remain loyal to him, and that's when we have the official kind of secret meeting with Lucille, uh, where they basically plot to kill Carmatus, uh, along with the help of an influential, influential senator named Gracchius. And so basically they come up with this concoction to get, you know, to basically get Maximus back to Rome, to get him with his legion so that he can come back and basically uh, dethrone Commodus and to basically, you know, uh, free everyone and be the rightful, uh, you know, ruler. Uh, and basically what ends up happening there after they have come up with this concoction, unfortunately, that's when... Uh, it, Somehow, Commodus finds out the plan and thwarts it. So, before we move on past that, what are you guys' thoughts on that sequence of the film? That's those those two second battles. What did you think about this plan that they came up with, and the scene with Lucille and with Proximo and all this kind of good jazz? Like, what did you guys think about that little sequence of the? film and was there anything about it that you loved or you hated or you thought was you know perfection or you thought was made this movie even better type of deal start with you alan um yeah the 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 battle with uh the the gladiator the undefeated dude um that was pretty cool it was because it was you know with the tigers and and you know they added the tigers because you had never seen the tiger you know you didn't see the tigers until that battle so you had no idea that the, all that was going on, and then when the, ta the you know the tigers come out and he beats the guy up, and basically he's telling Commodus, you know, go fuck yourself, you know, I, I'm 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 just gonna do my thing, you know, because by that time he's already identified himself that he's Maximus, you know, everybody knows who he is, everybody knows he's the general of the armies, and then it was kind of like a feel good part of the movie, you know, when when he meets the other dude. You know, he's like, hey, man, the, you know, the armies are waiting for you. You know, we, we thought you were dead, but now that we know you're alive, you know, heck, you know, we'll, we'll come in here and take over, you know, whatever you want us to do. And uh, so, you know, they have all these plots and stuff, and it's like, all right, it may work out for them. And then suddenly, bam, you know, the, the, the his whatever guy, whatever, you know, they find them hanging on the thing, and they arrest the senator, and... You know, and even before that, you know, already Com Commodus had basically told his sister, you know, uh, I'm going to take over your son. You know, your son's going to live with me and you're going to be nothing. So, it, it, you know, it, it was a good it, it was a good series of up and downs. You know, the battle was good. You know, he kicked ass in the battle and then he meets his buddy. So it's like, oh, yeah, this feels good. You know, he gets his little dolls back or whatever, his, his family back. <laughs> You know, and then he gets fucked. Technically, you know, it's like, oh, then you know. So it it it, it was a series. It was good because you know it was a good up and down. I mean, the battle, of course, was awesome. You know, and if you had watched the, uh, they have the they had the DVD, so they had the deleted scenes, and then the deleted scenes at before the battle, what they were doing is they were putting Jewish families out there and letting them get eaten by the tigers. So that crowd was already worked up. And then, you know, so it was like, you can tell, you know, in other words, it made you hate the emperor more. It was like, you know, taking these innocent people and putting them out there to get eaten by the thing. And, you know, it was like, oh, Maximus is going to kill his, kick his ass. I can't wait. And no, that shit ain't going to happen, man. He got you on your plan. And uh, so it was a good series of up and downs on it, I, I, I thought, yeah. Awesome. Uh, what did you think about that? the first fight sequence where they work as a team to defeat the gladiators and the chariots and all that kind of good stuff? Well, the the first... Actually, the scene itself was cool, but the best part about the scene was when the Emperor comes down and realizes that he's Maximus, 
all his guys were willing to die for him. So when they, when he was like, all right, let's kill him. And then the crowd was like, boo, and all that. You can tell that all his guys were really the, hey, if we got to go to war with these guys, we're going to, we'll die here for him. So that was like, all right, he's got his own mini army. I mean, it's not what the kind of army he had before, but he had the loyalty. Not only had he won the loyalty of his guys, he had won the loyalty of the crowd. So that changed, that was like the, the up. It was like, yeah, all right. Fuck you, Commodus. And then, all right, you know, then it goes, yeah. So that first battle scene was intense. I mean, it was intense. You know, like you say, with the girl getting cut in half and, you know, and, and you know, he basically was like, let's just get together and kick some ass, you know. Because even the guy, one of the senators was like, well, aren't they supposed to lose this? You know, they were, they, you know, they were supposed to lose it and they didn't. So it was, yeah. That first battle scene. I mean, uh, the whole the whole action sequence from there, from, I mean, there's really nothing. I mean, there's one part that, you know, I'm going to criticize, but that's coming up in a little bit. But besides that, man, everything else was solid. Excellent. Thank you. Jeff, same question, sir. I think that the, um, this is a, a, a part of the, of the film where, um, you really start to, you know, have have the the themes um, uh, flushed out with that are there. They're just very like um, not purposeful and not like elevated or like outward. You know what I'm saying? But they're there. Uh, that are very basic ones and very tr- things you see in a lot of like classic films. A lot of the basic good and evil type, you know, uh, uh, dichotomy, you know, going on. Um, you know, uh, you, you know the. Um, the righteous, like you know, the 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 you know the the um you know the good the good soldier, the good man, right? The um the genuine uh, in, in man with integrity that loves his children and his you know his wife and whatnot and everything, and um, fights for his country and whatnot and everything, and is loyal, right and trustworthy. Um, is fucked over, you know what I'm saying? Made into a slave and shit and whatnot, and then, um, you know, through his sheer like fucking fighting ability and whatnot and leadership and the respect he commands is able to like, you know, be so instrumental as a slave. And then as a gladiator that he literally fucking, um, is able to fucking like, you know, straighten out what could have been a really bad situation with Commodus running the show. Cause look at like cyber said, that motherfucker's a little bitch, right? I mean, fuck man. If Rome was declining, dude, with that motherfucker, uh, calling the shots, man, that, 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 that decline would be steep quickly, quickly, bruh. You feel me? Because I certainly would not respect Rome if I was like fucking, you know, some the Gauls or some shit or whatever or whatnot out there or whatnot. I'd be like, fuck it. With this little bitch running the show? Shit. Go attack Rome. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't exactly command respect. Um, so, no, I mean, uh, uh, and then of course, you know, I don't want, we're not, we won't get into the end, but like, uh, there are like some, uh, some poetic and, um, some, you know, some, um, philosophic aspects that are older tropes from other films books novels that are flushed out you don't understand what i'm saying cyber um throughout the film it really scott is just the kind of director that like is overt with that stuff right he does it with like the dolls alan as you described them you know what i'm saying and whatnot is the runes right um i always thought that, that when i saw it the first time and you even watching it now i found that like very humbling to think about like what it must be like to feel that kind of pain and be a slave and shit and whatnot and have lost everything and have to suffer it and whatnot and live with it and everything and like only have that to connect back to it as like a way to vent or like feel better or whatever like for it to mean that much to someone um i think people were more real back then you know what i'm saying like you know when they loved someone and whatnot it was different than now you know what i'm saying like shit was different right i mean maybe not love but like marriage like you know children you know your wife like whatever Things were different. People should took people took things differently at a more serious level than we do now. We live in a lot easier, so you know, like they face shit, things we don't we don't face. Um, and this movie does a really great job of like giving you that vibe, even though we see so much stuff that's in the arena, right? And the arena itself is really a great part of the film, and we see that in here. You know, it, it, it's 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 very important. It's an important aspect of the the chariot. Um, you know, um, you know, fight scene in the arena, right? Is is seeing the crowd, the volume of the crowd, 
the cheering, and whatnot, and the excitement from it. Um, you know, one thing that I I always found interesting when I first saw this is being younger was the concept of people back then finding people being killing other people amusing, entertaining, like in a basketball game. We we do now, right? And like trying to put myself in that place and understand how I could see human death like that and slaughter that way. It's really fucking deep, man. When you think about it, it really is. And I, I'm sorry, but I can't help but watch stuff like this and think about that stuff. The existential stuff, when that stuff happens, it's like, wow. And they just put you right in that place, man. They put you in there. They do such a great job with the sound and whatnot and everything. And then when they balance it and all that, right? It's where you hear the crowd. Right. And when they roar, they roar, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it adds such a really in, in, important aspect, I think. And then again, um, as far as the coordination between the, the slaves, the, the, the gladiators, I think it's um, it just adds again to the um, the overall uh, ethos or like uh, core, you know, aspects of the film that are about like um, good, good, you know, good versus evil. Right. And like um, and he, re- heroes. Right, um, you know, and, and just in a, in a really old setting, uh, you know, not superhero shit, but like real shit. And um, that's the thing about about uh, Maximus; he's flesh and blood, right? Like, you know, he's nasty as fuck. He's a human being, but he's but you, he can be killed. And um, so, and also, you know, again, the tigers and shit, and whatnot, man. Uh, oh my god, it just scares the fuck out of you if you think about it. Put yourself in that situation. Holy shit. Do you imagine seeing a fucking tiger come at you and a fucking chain running at you, bruh? And you're fighting for your death life, too, at the same time with a fucking sword in your head? Holy shit. I mean, that's fucked up, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy fuck. You got to be and, and knowing that the emperor's trying to kill you. No, but imagine how much it all must sound when you're sitting in that position. Like, you have to hear all that. The crowd, the all that, you know, all this shit. It's got to be intense. That must add like the whole element. If you're in that situation, uh, it must really maybe even like almost throw you off a little bit at times, possibly, right? Or make you almost like you know throw off your game. Yeah, and they did a good job with the uh, with the stadium, you know, because we know what a stadium looks like now. You know, they it was you know that's the way it looked like then. You know, it was finished, and you know the people were there, and all that. You know, now it's just half you know it's halfway destroyed. So, you know, the way they made it, like, it looked new and shiny and, you know, they just. No, and and Cyber, honestly, uh, would would you agree that, uh, honestly, um, overall, uh, the film is pretty simplistic. It's not, like, really deep. It's not, like, heavy. It's not not complicated, right? It's not confusing at all. It's, It's not, like, I'm not saying it's boring or whatever. I'm just saying that it's a very simple structure of story, right? Yes. Yeah. No. And I, and I think that that's, um, it, it's it it shows a lot of Ridley Scott's ability as a director that he can like carry a film like that, and have it be that sort of simple get vibe to it, but be that powerful. True that. True that. I agree. All right. Thank you both. Great. Great job, guys. Great job. All right, so that pretty much brings us to the ending chapter of this film. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, uh, Commodus finds out their plan and basically uh, causes it to go awry. Uh, basically, you know, he ends up having them uh, capture Maximus back, even though all the other people sacrificed themselves to let him get free, and, and that didn't work because Commodus found out. And, uh, basically, uh, to win back the approval, uh, the public's approval, uh, Commodus decides to challenge Maximus to a duel in the Coliseum. So, basically, that's when we get that great scene there where, uh, Russell Crowe, a.k.a. Maximus, is scrapped up in that thing like this, and he's having that conversation with Commodus, and, uh, basically, uh, Commodus ends up stabbing him in the lung to try to make him have less an advantage of, you know, beating him in the Coliseum. So then they basically go out uh, into the Coliseum and they have their battle. 
and we basically see them battle out and stuff like that, even though, you know, uh, you know, Maximus has been injured, he still is basically kicking Commodus's ass. And uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, Maximus uh, de-arms uh, Commodus, and uh, he starts begging for a you know sword from from the people, and they all back down because of their allegiance to Maximus. And so, uh, once once they don't do that, a uh, Commodus has a uh, knife that's hidden, and he gra- pulls it out and starts slashing at Maximus, and Maximus is able to overpower him with it, and ends up driving it right into his neck, killing him. Uh, after he kills him, uh, basically that's when Maximus succumbs to his wounds, uh, and uh, you know, basically they end up picking him up to to bury him and everything, uh, to give him a proper burial because he it was a war, war general, uh, and he dies and he has visions where he's re- reunited with his wife and sons. Uh, and then basically, uh, his friends and allies honor him as a soldier of Rome at Lucille's behest because she ha- gives kind of that, like, little speech at the end there, uh, saying that we need to commemorate this man because he did fight for us. He, he was a true, you know, person that truly believed in Rome and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, uh, basically that's when, uh, Juba visits the Colosseum and buries fi- the figurines of Maximus' wife and son, on the spot where Maximus dies, and that's when the film ends. So, what do you guys... Th- I know how to speak. What do you guys think about ah. that ending sequence? And uh, w- everything, yeah, exactly. And uh, what did you guys think about the ending? What did you think about the fight between Commodus and Maximus? Uh, what did you think about that conversation that, you know, Commodus has with, uh, you know, Maximus? And uh, if there's anything else you'd like to go back to, like the the uh, conversation that Commodus has with Lucille uh, prior to, you know, basically, you know, saying that he found out her plan and all this kind of stuff. What were you guys' thoughts on that end sequence of this film? And overall, how did you feel about the film at the end of this film? Uh, starting with you, Alan. Um, well, the the uh, we'll go to the ending. Um. The ending was the beginning. You know, you didn't understand it until you watched it. That the first scene of the movie, it shows him going down the hills and touching the the wheat and all that. You know, that's that's mm. the vision he sees at the end when he dies. Um, so it, it, you know, it circles back to the beginning. Um, but the 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 battle scene with 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 the emperor. I mean it. it, it it was cool because you know he just he, he he was just a, such a sissy. I mean, he knew he was gonna lose if he fight Maximus, so he, you know he had to stab him. You know he had to you know do all the crap to get. Are him. you sure though? Do you really think he? Do you th- honestly? Do you think that he honestly he thought that like he was that weak against Maximus? Oh no doubt, no doubt. There was no way. There was no way. Okay. I mean, he always lived in Maximus shadows because. Re- the emperor always favored Maximus, the the emperor before. You know, he always favored Maximus. Maximus was the son he never had. You know, he he knew it. You know, hell, I mean, he was fucking his sister at one time. You know, so he you know he hadn't been involved with them for a long time, so he knew it. I mean, he was like, "Come on, man, I can't beat him." You know, this guy commands the armies. You know, he shows up in the at the beginning in the first battle. He shows up, and the soldiers are like, "Yeah, yeah, the battle's already done." You know, what are you doing here? You know, where's Maximus? You know, they were looking for. You know, so you know he knew he there was no way he could uh he could beat him. Now, when it comes to the 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 battle itself. You know, at the end, you know, when 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 they see the, the, the and I'm going back to the part that I thought that was kind of mm, was remember when they when they went inside the 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 jail that he was about to escape and they went there and all his guys basically fought for him and the German dude gets killed when he got hit with the arrows. That was the only special effects that I didn't like in the movie because you can tell there's padding in the front and back. And that kind of like, oh man, 
damn it. You just kick ass the whole time, but right there, you know, and, you know, he fights when he fights the, the Com Commodus, I guess that's his name. And, and he dies, you know, when he kills him, the last things he says before he dies is like, free my men. So that was his first thing was, you know, free my men, make them free and give Rome back to the Senate. You know, those was his, his last two two wishes, because basically that's what the emperor wanted. Well, the emperor wanted to, the Rome to go back to the Senate and and free his men. So his men won his his men got their freedom because of him. I mean, of course, they showed Juba at the end, but it was all his men, everybody that survived. You know, they 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 got their freedom. So it was, you know, even though he dies, you know, it's like, well, you know, you kind of knew when you start watching it and then you realize, all right, at the beginning, we should have realized he was going to die at the end. You know, at the beginning, you know, you don't realize it, but, you know, at the end, you should have realized, yeah, he's going to die at the end because he had seen himself dying. You know, so it, it, it uh, I mean, I thought the ending was perfect. I thought it was, you know, the speech and all that was kind of Hollywoodish, and ah, okay, I'll give it to them. But the battle itself was good. You know, the the soldiers getting released is good. You know, when, what's his name? I'm trying to think. The one that didn't want to give him the sword. You know, he was the one that was supposed to have killed him at the beginning. You know, that's when he was like, all right, you know, I should die like a soldier of Rome. Just stab me in the back of the neck. And, you know, he got away. You know, so, you know, he 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 was the one at the end. He realized, all right, I'm, you know. I can't, I can't give him the sword, you know, you know, he, he is Maximus, you know, he actually under, you know, he respected him when it came down to it, he respected him, you know, yeah, that's, that's my general, you know, that's my boss, you know, he's not just a prisoner. So, you know, it, it all, I like the way they did the ending because it, it, it all went back to the beginning. He died as the general of the armies. He, you know, he, he, he freed Rome and he killed the emperor, which, you know, it was kind of like, dude, he killed the emperor, and people really ain't complaining, you know, so they must have not liked him that much. So, yeah, but over, I mean, you know, it was kick-ass. I thought it was kick-ass, the whole thing. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Sir Jeff, same question, sir. Well, again, um, it's... um. You know the film. The film is uh, is very suspenseful in some ways, in, in very slight ways. It's certain parts of the film. I want to mention that. You know, just I never mentioned that really, but it is. Um, there, it, it, what I it is very. When I say that, the, basically, the structure of the story is very simple. It's not like there aren't situa situations or, um, I guess you know, uh, you know, sort of, um. Stuff that happens, you know, where as the movie flows, you're not surprised, like, or stuff doesn't like kind of you shock you a little bit and whatnot. And you're like, oh shit, really? Because it does happen. It's there. You know what I'm saying? It's just that it's not uh, a heavy aspect of the, of the film overall or the at the end. Um, you know, like, I mean, um, and I think that overall, once again, uh, they handle Maximus's death very well. Um, you know, like, it really is done well done. Um, and, um, you know, that's a really good point, Alan, that, um, that shot of him, like, uh, running his hands through the, um, the, you know, the, the, the wheat or whatever the fuck that shit is or whatever and all that with the sun on him and all that shit that they circle back to that and all that and everything and whatnot. I like that kind of connective tissue, you know, in the film or that kind of trope where you're able to make that sort of connection from the, you know, sort of inception, right? Cy cyber, like, you know, where they they correlate, connect that sort of like, you know, opening right out of nowhere where, with, you know, with DiCaprio washing up and then, all, and then they flush that back out again later on in the film. I like that kind of contrast or that sort of like circular type of like, you know, storytelling where you try to go in that direction and, you know, try to connect things like that in some way. Uh, it's interesting. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, I think that, um, I don't know if uh, Yokan Phoenix got any kind of uh, if he got nominated for anything for this or anything like that, or whatnot. Uh, but um, he did do a great job, I thought, in the film. Absolutely, and, and um, all the way through too. You know, like 
um, you didn't know what the hell to think of him at times. Like, holy fuck. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like, he, he almost is kind of creepy a little bit at times, I think. Uh, but, um, no, um, it, it's very powerful, the, 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 uh, the loyalty of, the, um, of Maximus' troops and whatnot and, his, you know, and like, you know, his, um, his former soldiers and whatnot and all that stuff and whatnot. How he commands this respect, right? Um, almost it seems like he either earns it or commands it, right? From everyone. You know what I'm saying? Including women. I mean, he's too busy being a slave and shit to be out there slinging it. But believe me, Maximus can handle his biz. All right. If he was up, if he was on Tinder, he'd be gladiating, bitch. All right. <laughs> he, he he's on top of that shit. So, anyways, uh, right. What do you think his screen would be on on, uh, on, on Tinder? Gladiator? Oh, somebody already has it. Too bad. Yeah, Maximus would be getting the women. I mean, hell, he was getting the women. He was getting the women when 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 you know when he met his uh, the the guy that was with him. You know, the, the uh, women were all over him, and he's like, yeah, you know it. I mean, and, and you know, he's Maximus. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dingling. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, no, but it's a it's a very um it's a very uh, heavy film, man. It's gritty, right? It's fucking gritty, man. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough fucking film. It doesn't like uh try to go soft on you at all as a, in the audience. Like he never the, really Scott never goes easy on you with this with this movie. Mm -mm. Everything is gritty. Um, you know, there's no perfection, like there's no happy fucking perfection with everything and whatnot. Nothing's like perfect for everybody, you know, but it's all well done though. Yeah. Um, and um I can't remember look and look back to like what came out that year and try to really mentally compare. But you know, I have to sit and to, like, you know, fuck with it, I guess. But I do remember that this film had a real impact on me when I saw it the first time. It really did. Mm -hmm. I really was impacted by it and whatnot. It, it really uh, made me think a little bit. And, um, and it was entertaining as fuck, too. Right? So I'm not sure what the running time was on it, but it couldn't have been more than... It was two, two hours and 35 minutes. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say 220. All right. It was... Okay, I was close. I mean, um, it really didn't have an happy ending. I mean, Juba no, was freed. The, no, I mean, but that's okay, though. Man. But, but that's really, but that's really Scott. That's yeah. why I said it's, it's it's gritty. It's tough. It was right. Good. It, it it exemplifies what what we've been like back then. But he's still a hero, right? He's a tragic hero. Yes. And again, and he and he returns to his wife, doesn't he, and his son in yeah. heaven or whatever. Yeah. So like, there you go. I mean, I thought that, that shit was dope. Right? I mean, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing. Uh, I don't have a problem with seeing a a well done hero. You know. Uh, tragic figure kind of deal. Someone sacrificing themselves for for the good of of, of uh, people overall and whatnot and everything. That's a great trope for me. I like that. Yeah, you know, well, it was it was cool because he had a mission and his mission was to kill Commodus. That was his mission and he accomplished it. You know, he dies at the end, but he he accomplished what he. Well, it's did. a good thing that it's a good thing that he didn't have to fucking fight Shuri as Black Panther there in that final battle. He got fucked up. Yeah, that would have been different. <laughs> <laughs> or She Hulk would show up, you know. <laughs> Yo, if She Hulk showed up and be over. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to rip, I'm gonna have to rip that clip out, out of there, bro. That's funny as shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cyber. I can't help myself. That's funny as shit. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cyber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Funny, funny guys here, people. Funny, funny guys. Yeah, anyway, the MCU could learn a lot, a lot from Gladiator. Yes, it could. It could most definitely, most definitely. All right, so that was the end of the film. Now let's do ratings, people. What would you give this on a scale of one to ten? Even now that it's twenty-three years old, what would you give it as a rating, Alan? Uh, nine point seven five point six. Okay, Jeff. I'm actually I'm working on a, a, a new formula for us. Where we're going to use penises for our rating. Like I'm going to have like di dildos and like you know uh, stuff like that. What not? I will use penis. Uh, we'll use penises for our rating, like the length of it. Uh, but anyways, no. Uh, I'll give it a nine point five. All right. 
I give it a. I give it a. I give it a solid ten. Uh, even twenty three years later, it's still as damn good. It still is flawless to, in my eyes. Everything about it, from the music, cinematography, the directing, the acting by all. Uh, I mean, even, like everyone said earlier, the, the secondary characters in this movie are fantastic just as much as the lead characters. And they all pulled their weight throughout this whole entire film. And I think that Dijma Huzan, Oliver Reed, uh, a lot of those actors should have gotten more credit for how amazing they were in this film as well, uh, besides the the main cast. Uh, like I said, I think Joaquin Phoenix was a, uh, a bitch in this film. Huge bitch. And... Uh, I think it's you know it played well into his character of Commodus, and uh, if, for those that don't know, Commodus actually was a real ruler. He was a real person yep. uh, that that actually uh, oversaw Rome from 172 A.D. to 192 A.D. So uh, he was a real person. So I don't know how accurate that portrayal was, but it it, it was definitely an interesting portrayal by walking phoenix but yeah i give it a I, solid 10 cyber there had to have been slimy spineless motherfuckers like that back then come on now yeah. right why not i didn't say that there could it be i just said i don't know how accurate it was yeah. especially for a uh for that particular uh, roman empire or that emperor for rome at that time yeah. i mean he could have been slimy and spineless but at the same time i'm sure he had a, he he was able to rule for 20 years so he must have been a little different than this version of himself oh yeah no you're right 20 years is a long time to rule like if you're if you're garbage yeah so no nah. anyways oh that go ahead Cyber. i'm sorry so anyways that is our awesome Amazing, wonderful review of Gladiator. That was also our rankings of it, too, as well. We want to thank everyone for watching and enjoying. And I will turn it over to Jeff with anything else you'd like to say. Plugs. There you go. Plugs, 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 people. Was having a shark. Oh, so as always, if you enjoy me here on the MCU's Bidding Edge, Definitely check out my solo content underneath Cybernetic Shark. You'll find me on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You'll find me on all those places. And as you can see here, I just recently uploaded today my Renfield review. So definitely Man. go check that out. Love Renfield. Great film if you have not seen it. Uh, fantastic film. Bloody as hell and just awesome. Uh, directed by Chris McKay. Starring Nicolas Cage, Nicholas Holt, Aquafina. Definitely check it out. Ben Schwartz. Uh, but yeah, definitely check go go check that out on my YouTube channel, people. Check out that review. It was a very fun review to do. It was so much fun. And as always, as you can see, I got some shorts. Recently, I did the 300 Spartans, the 310 to Yumas, uh, which are fun. Uh, you'll be seeing more stuff. I'll be having my Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 review up soon. So keep your eyes out for that. And uh, as always, thank you to everyone that's got me to the 643 mark at this moment. And uh, you guys have been rocking it. Keep keep getting at it. Keep subscribing. Let's get me to that 750 mark and then to that 1,000 mark, people. Uh, we still don't want, you know, Jeff to be giving uh, those crazy hand jobs as we've talked about. And, uh, yeah, so let's get us there. There you go. That's right. Uh and uh, I want to just point out that um, Cyber, we haven't even discussed it yet, which uh, probably is something we, something we should discuss besi uh, besides me getting your plane tickets and whatnot and everything. Cyber and I are going to Rockville, baby, if, which if you don't know is um, a like a music festival, I guess, or whatever down here in Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm not sure if they always hold it in Daytona Beach, but they've had the Rockville for a long time. I know that. Um, and we're going to go down there and we're going to do two days of the show and then we're going to go out. And uh, hit up some comic book shops and whatnot and everything and kind of like, you know, just shake some hands and shit and whatnot and try to take some pictures, of, you know, me and him together and kind of have some extra, you know, stuff for the websites and our thumbnails. And we gotta do, we're going to do a show, Cyber. But do sh we're going to have to do shows while we're there. So I was just thinking about that. Like, I'll, I guess I'm going to have to, um, like, real quick have to get my shit together and get my get the gear put together and whatnot and everything for us to be able to, like, remote record. Yep, yep. I will. It's also, I'll, I'll, I already wrote something down during the show about it. I thought about it. So, no, but we'll be there, folks. So we'll actually, Cyber and I, we'll be meeting in person for the first time ever. 
to go fucking check out Bandmate and listen to some really good bands. It's going to be a blast. Um, Daytona Beach uh, is dope. It's a dope place. And, um, you know, I'm sure Cyber and I will be out there in the new beach park walking around with our should be tiny penises and whatnot. Proudly, right? Uh, you know, getting after it. Uh, you know, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't go. I, I'm not. I, I, I don't have. I don't have any extremely tiny penis, and I've been to resorts and whatnot that have new beaches. And I won't go on them. I'm just not that kind of person. I don't do that kind of shit. But hold on, I'm, I'm gonna pull up the blank and click the podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I just like to say, folks, for you know, for on behalf of the, of the blank and click the podcast, and Alan, I want to thank Alan, um, for helping us out so much and whatnot, and everything with these reviews and whatnot that we've been doing. These were our first real solid, legit movie reviews. And to have Alan over here, you know, helping out with us and whatnot and everything, we really appreciate it. And, um, you know, the boys over at uh, the Black Lives Matter podcast, Matt, Freddie, and uh, Alan, are um, really good friends of mine and whatnot and everything. And uh, good creators and whatnot, good people. Uh, they're all best friends and shit and whatnot. I know all of them individually. Uh, I, I just only can, I just can't only talk to Alan and Matt. I don't, Freddie won't talk to me. Um, no, don't feel bad, Freddie. Don't talk to nobody. He's antisocial. <laughs> But um, no, they make some good content. You know, they have some good shows and whatnot and everything. And um, essentially, um, if you want to check them out on the Bleeding Edge, just go check out some of our trailer reactions we did to Bandmade together, which we hopefully will do again, ho- you know, hopefully soon. But Alan, what's going on in the Black League Club, the podcast, my friend? Well, we're um, we're just doing our th- our thing. You know, it's just three guys. Basically, if you want to act like you're sitting on a couch and listening to a conversation that's what we're all about i mean they're, they're my brothers and i love them and uh we, we we just take care of business and we do what we got to do to get things rolling i mean matt matt you know he runs the show you know and he uh basically does we really don't have a, a set formula you know we just we just hang out you know, we we're friends. We used to hang out all the time, and you know, we all got families now and stuff, so we can't hang out as much as we do. So we were like, "Hey, let's just do a podcast to get an excuse just to hang out." Hey, you and had Raymond on your fucking show and whatnot from Booze and Chills. That's always a positive. Yeah, even, we had even, Raymond on the show, even though yeah. you misspelled his fucking name, which I've done also. So don't uh, worry about it. Chick, I don't know how to spell. Come it's R A Y M O N. Ah, Raymond, 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 whatever. <laughs> You know, he's a cool dude. Raymond's a cool dude. Ah, uh, you know, he is a cool dude. Yeah, we love know, Raymond. We, we've show. Had we some do guests and stuff on there, and and then basically, if you just want to sit back and l- listen to some guys babble and just shoot the shit, man, that's us. You know, we really don't have a set thing. We just shoot the shit. You know, and that's all. It, it's all about. You know. There you go. And fucking, um, you know, uh, again, whenever you guys are ready to do some more bandmate trailer reaction videos and whatnot and everything, I'm ready to do them. I'm down. I'm back to doing them again and shit. And, um, you know, uh, the last time I checked, they seem to work out pretty well because, I mean, they still get more – they still get views still. Like, new, they get new views, like, weekly and monthly and whatnot and everything. They got the, our YouTube channel all that shit. I do check them out. Um, and they've got really good numbers for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, so – you know, we obviously did did, a, did something good with them, even though they're like yeah. forty seven minutes long. Yeah, I mean, if you want to listen to fart noises, man, just you know, listen to us because that's what we're all about. There you go. <laughs> all right. Um, no, I'll carry it out. I guess you cyber, uh, cyber, great job moderating tonight, sir. As always, my good friend. Um, I um, let's see. Well, I'll talk to you in the studio here in just a minute. What not everything? Um, and I'll talk to you then. Um. Uh, Alan, again, man, thanks for helping out, bro. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Have your great guest, man. You're doing a great job, right? Um, that, it's nice of you not to be sloppy, fucking drunk uh, this time yeah. tonight. Uh, uh, appreciate you. I'm just yeah. kidding, man. I'm no, no, that, that, that once we get off, I'll get fucked up. Yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I, I hope I hope you do, man. You know what? Get fucked up. Get twice fucked up just for me, bro. <laughs> All right. Seriously. Um. <laughs> Cyber, thank you for care caring about my welfare and me not not wanting me to have to go suck random dick and shit and whatnot and all that. I appreciate you, bro. Anyways, folks, we love all of you. Uh, we appreciate all your support. We hit 20k subscribers the other day. Cyber no- notified me. That's wonderful. Um, we're gonna do some giveaways soon. Um, legit. Like, I mean, I'm not talking about like you know, 
I'm not talking about three dollars seven five cent, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? At least ten dollar, fifteen dollar Amazon cards and shit like that. When I got a bunch of gift cards and shit, whatnot to throw out. So we'll do something. I'll do put some polls up and whatnot and all that. We'll get some people in the goddamn comment section and whatnot and everything. And you can freaking engage, motherfucker, if you want that shit. Come on now. Either way, no, we appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're very humbled um, and thankful for um, for all of the support that we get and everything and whatnot. Um, it's a uh, it's honestly, it's um, it's very um, it's wonderful. We do really well, and whatnot on YouTube, and whatnot. Cyber and I are really happy with pretty much how things have gone, and um, you know, uh, we, we have a lot of good people that fucking come on the shows and whatnot, and that's why we're we're as good as we are. So um, that and uh, Jar Jar Banks and um, uh, the life also experience of being down by She Hulk. So there you go, folks. <laughs> For Cyber Night Shark, um, the same co-host. Of the uh, two co-hosts of the MC's Bleeding Edge, and Alan, the the doesn't talk um, audio producer and overall producer at the Black League Club the podcast. I am Jeff S, aka True Knowledge, humbled to be the creator and least talented co-host in the history of the MC's Bleeding Edge ever. Um, and I love all of you, and God bless you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Cyber. I appreciate you. those dirty looks and everything. Well, not too. Here you go. Oh, D. That motherfucker. There you go. How about that? That's what, that's what I think about that, bitch. Over here living the guy did the fucking Inception dimension and shit and all that shit. Damn. Come on now. As if I haven't had enough of that shit. Uh, the, the hoes are laughing? Yep. So the audience are a bunch of hoes? Yep. Huh? Catch me outside. How about that? Catch you outside? What does that mean? What I just said. Catch her outside means she'll go outside and do what she has to do. That's what she's talking about. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is okay, all, yeah. This is all, but don't.